exceptional bread without kneading. And the cool thing about this dough, the entire thing can be mixed in your proofing container so you don't have a bunch of dirty dishes. So the bread we're going to make today is from Ken Forkish's Flour, Water, Salt, and Yeast. And Ken, like myself and many other artisan bakers around the world, prefer high hydration doughs. These high hydration doughs, when you first look at them, they seem too wet to even knead. So we're not going to knead. We're going to use a folding method. The folding method, you're actually taking the wet dough, scooping under it, lifting it just to resistance, and folding it back in on itself. What we're doing is we're aligning those gluten, that fibrous network of proteins in the wheat, we're aligning those gluten strands so that they can support that trapped gas and give shape to the actual loaf. We're gonna start by measuring 1,000 grams of flour into our proofing bucket. So this dough we're going to autolyze, and all that means is it means to hydrate the flour and water before you add the salt and yeast. And what that does is it activates the enzymes in the flour and it helps um, break down those complex carbohydrates into sugars, which is what the yeast eats. So it facilitates um, the yeast, the gas production from the yeast. A thousand grams of flour, and I'm going to add 780 grams of water. I'm adding warm water, and this is between 90 and 95 degrees. And the temperature of the water dictates how active your yeast is going to be. Pour your water directly into your flour, and we're just going to mix this up and give it a good stir. You want all of the dry flour to be hydrated, so scoop down from the bottom and pull that flour into the dough. Okay, so my flour is thoroughly hydrated. I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes to autolyze. Get all of that flour hydrated, and then I'm going to just sprinkle over my yeast and salt, and I'll show you um, the pincing method and the folding method um, in a few minutes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Our dough is autolyzed. We're going to add the yeast and the salt. So I'm going to measure out. It's 2% salt, so 20 grams of salt. It's actually 22 grams. 22 grams of salt and I'm going to sprinkle that over my autolyzed dough. And this is 0.8 grams of yeast and I don't have a scale that's that sensitive so it's a scant quarter teaspoon so just slightly below a quarter teaspoon. And just sprinkle the yeast directly on the dough. So now wet your hand and have a bowl of water. You might need to wet your hand four times while you're doing this. Pretend the dough has four sides. You want to reach under the first side, pull it up until there's resistance, and then fold it in on itself. Turn your dough and continue maybe three tours, three um, rotations around your bowl. And you want to get that yeast and salt mixed in. Okay, so once you've done that three or four times, you're gonna use the pincher method. And so what you're doing is your, you can keep your dough in the bucket just for um, educational purposes, I'll pull it out. You wanna take your fingers and you wanna pinch the dough off into little balls. And you wanna do that for five or six little pieces. And then these pieces, we're gonna do the fold in um, pull method as well. You just want to make sure that all of the yeast and the salt are fully integrated and this will help that because if it got folded into the middle um, it might be hard to get it out to the sides. So again fold up, 
just, and you want to be delicate with your dough, you don't want to tear it, you don't want to break those gluten networks down, you want to encourage them. So fold and pull, fold and pull. Okay. So this is looking good. I'm going to let this dough relax for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to do the whole fold, um, pull, and pinch method again. What is at the door? It's Dr. Silva. Awesome. Um, we had an emergency. We had a chicken in trauma. We had one attacked the other night. So friendly, of course, my favorite chicken was attacked. I don't know what time you guys are doing. Our neighbor is a surgeon. And, well, two neighbors are. So our chicken is getting excellent, excellent care. He's doing a cooking video. Hi, Ivan. Okay. So. This is our second fold. And with each subsequent fold, you're gonna notice that the bread gets a little more structure and it starts to hold its shape a little better. Okay, so I went around. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing and use the pincer method and cut off about six, five or six of these little dough balls. And go ahead and fold it maybe three or four more times. Okay, I'm going to give this another 15 minutes. Do that once again, and that will be our third um, fold. Okay, it's been 12 hours, and our dough is proofed. So the nice thing about using proofing, bucket, proofing buckets is that you get these markers. So I started out right about here and it has almost nearly tripled in volume. So this is what it looks like. You have these big beautiful pillowy bubbles. It's totally perfectly proofed. And you want to be really careful at this point. We're not punching the bread down. We don't want to degas it. That's, that's the worst thing. We want to preserve all of those bubbles. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on top of the dough as well as the side of the container and gently ease from the bottom, ease the bread out onto a floured surface. So this is what that looks like. Flour your surface well. You don't want your bread sticking and tearing. Flour around the top of the dough as well as around on the sides. Gently lift and pull that dough out of its container. So there you have it. So I want to sprinkle enough flour along the just the center area where I cut the bread so that my dough scraper doesn't stick and cut it into roughly two equal parts like so and you want to fold these into a, a ball so what you do is you pull and you fold over and when you pull on this dough you don't want to pull it beyond its point of resistance so the first pull it's going to be softer and more elastic um, and every subsequent pull, it's going to seize up just a little bit. So you fold it roughly all four corners in and you shape it into a nice round. So, and I keep the seam on the bottom. If you take just a regular kitchen bowl and you put a non terry cloth towel in it and you flour the towel, it's a fine line. I always overflower my towel and my bread gets a little bit floury, but you also don't want it to stick so it's kind of an art learning how much to flour and take your dough ball and support it by the weight of your hand and put the seam side down this dough has not been proofed and it pops up immediately you push down and it pops right back up 
proof dough, if it's overproofed, you push it, it doesn't, it kind of collapses. It doesn't spring back at all. But perfectly proofed dough, you push it and it springs back partially. So that's what we're looking for. So go ahead and poke your dough at this stage just so you get a feel of what that resistance is. And you want half that resistance when it's done proofing. It's usually about an hour. So we'll give these their hour to proof and our oven to heat up and we'll be back in just a few. I'm going to preheat my oven for a good solid hour before I bake my bread. So as soon as my dough is in its proofing balls, I go ahead and get the oven started. I want it really nice and hot. I'm going to bake these loaves one at a time because I only have one Dutch oven. If I had two, you could bake them simultaneously. So what the Dutch oven does is you put the loaf of bread in here, put the lid on it, and you bake it. So there's a small surface to trap all of that steam, and you get a simulated steam-injected oven um, experience. So I'm going to put this on the bottom of my um, baking stone and preheat the whole thing. So I just want to check the proof on these. You put a little flour on the top, then your finger doesn't stick when you poke it. So what I'm looking for is I want to push down and I want it to spring up about halfway and it looks absolutely perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and bake one of these loaves off because my uh, Dutch oven is nice and hot. And the other one, I don't want it to overproof. It's going to be about an hour before the other one goes in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator just to retard this um, stage that it's at right now. And this you want to be really careful with because it's super hot and you don't want to burn yourself. So little flour along the bottom, a little on your hands, and you want to invert this into carefully into your super hot pot without degassing it too much. So if you just roll it right off of your towel, it seems to work really well. And back in the oven. And it looks perfectly golden brown. Be careful when you take this thing out of its hot, hot pan. And just remove it from your pan and let it cool on a wire rack. So this pan I'm going to return to the oven for about five minutes before I put my second loaf in, just to make sure that it's nice and hot. I see you. There's Friendly, my sweet baby. You can see the purple area is, um, it's just some, that's an antimicrobial that I sprayed on her, but there's a pretty big gash right under her wing. And that's her good side. Her other side looks pretty horrendous. I don't know if she's gonna lose her eye or not, but. She's hanging tough. How's it going, Friendy? How's it going, Friendy? She's definitely, she's definitely kind of matted down. I don't think you can see from here, but she's not looking super perky right now, huh, friend? <laughs> 